Welcome to the Drive Time News Blast. 30 minutes, 45 commercial free minutes for patrons. Jam-packed with news of the day from a perspective of truth, liberty, and justice, this is Monica Perez. And I'm Brad Binkley. Our top story, Amy Coney Barrett was sworn in as the ninth justice on the Supreme Court, the third appointee for Trump. She was sworn in by Clarence Thomas, so it should have been John Roberts. And I heard, because he's the chief justice, and I heard, I think there's going to be another ceremony, but this was just kind of a, like, felt like a shotgun swearing in. But I heard speculation on Sirius, uh, on Fox headlines I was listening to, true or not, maybe John Roberts was afraid of going over to the White House. Like, I don't know if he's afraid of the miasma of of COVID or I don't know what. But anyway, it was Clarence Thomas. It's a hot bed of COVID over there in the White House. That's all you hear on CNN. (laughs) So Washington, D.C. has been doing better than any place in the country except for that one contaminated house. (laughs) Because there's such hacks because they don't have enough cleaning staff. But I just was like, maybe Clarence Thomas and Amy Coney Barrett are like the losers and like only he would go hang out with her. I saw where he might... Switch to the liberal side is what somebody said, whatever that means. Clarence Thomas. Not Clarence Thomas, excuse me. John Roberts already did that. He's already did that because he okayed Obamacare, which absolutely was unconstitutional. But he said because it's just a tax because you have to pay a fee. You can either just pay the fee or buy insurance. So it's just a tax instead of a forced buying something. That and it's that completely tortures any possible meaning of the Constitution. But what's really crazy is that the mandate has been struck, has been stricken, whatever. The mandate is no longer part of the law. So the law doesn't even have a tax in it anymore. It is definitely completely unconstitutional. But it doesn't matter. All I ever thought they wanted from Obamacare was to keep it there long enough to get everybody kind of hooked on this new system to kind of restructure our health care and then they have a crisis like this where they can just shift to single payer instead of forced private insurance so i feel like it, obamacare isn't really the issue it used to be because it's done its job which was the trojan horse as the apollo guy said or the tides foundation i can't remember so i did just want to reiterate that it makes me absolutely crazy that the supreme court has this much power in that i feel like if congress passes unconstitutional laws there there's a very simple remedy through state nullification of just not enforcing unconstitutional laws coming from congress if you want to enforce them in your state then it's a state law and if you don't it has no binding power That's why there was no Department of Justice or FBI in the Constitution, and it was only after the other remedy for unconstitutional federal law, secession, was exercised by the South, and then the North invaded them, and in order to keep them in line, they had to create and did in its aftermath the Department of Justice and the FBI to enforce unconstitutional congressional law. So the Supreme Court, in my opinion, really regardless of Marbury v. Madison, which was a very early decision, a Jeffersonian decision, Jefferson era decision, I still don't think it's valid for the Supreme Court to adjudicate. And that's why people care about the Supreme Court so much. They don't care about conflicts between the states or that kind of thing. Can I ask you a question about that's related to the Supreme Court? Yeah. I want to gauge perception of time. How long ago was it that RGB died? I would say Gator, about Gator, a year. Ginsburg. How long? I think she died a year ago. No, I mean how long <laughs> from the reporting of it? Not not when you think she uh, died. One month. How many days? Oh, right. Well, I remember. Wasn't it like 33 days till the election? That's close. That's close. 39 Only because days 33 ago. is such a significant. So if you take the election, it's going to be exactly seven days from now, I think. Yeah. So she, was died, it she died 39 days? 39 days ago. 39 days ago. Okay. Yeah. I, it seemed to me when I heard that number, I was like, whoa, it seems like it was six months ago almost. Well, because this entire Amy Coney Barrett thing, this is, you know how if you phrased it, I would have gotten it wrong. How, 
how long has it been since that ceremony in the Rose Garden where Amy Coney Barrett showed up and all those people were not wearing masks? It sparked the whole thing. It was before the debate. You know, like that seems like forever ago. It does. It seems like a distant memory. Yeah, Faintly here, there because there's so much information that they're packing into our heads so quickly that it pushes that other dude, stuff out. It's so weird, and I just don't know how to look at. It. I keep thinking we might have a massive crisis, like an assassination, but it might just be just the whole volume of craziness. I mean, this election thing is. I mean, I don't know how it's going to turn. I do see all these election this controversy around or this what looks like is going to be some kind of crisis so i kind of dug in on how the election should work what it, it so let's start with and then i'll tell you maybe take a break and I'll, I'll tell you the couple of things i dug into i saw an article that said something about the bizarre claim by trump that the election should be decided on election day. Yeah, they've been priming the pump for that narrative for months now. And that was even in that indivisible email that I read. It said to normalize this idea that the election is not, the outcome is not going to be determined on election day. There's going to take time, weeks until after because of the mail-in voting. That, that was a strategic messaging, organized messaging attempt to create this idea. What's up, guys? With such uncertainty in the world right now, the best way to have true security is by growing your own food. And Neighbors Feed and Seed in Smyrna, Georgia, they got you covered. They offer garden supplies, vegetable plants, chicken feed, bird feed, farm supply, everything your garden or farm needs. They even host a farmer's market on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And right now, for Propaganda Report listeners only, they're offering 10% off of all online purchases at NeighborsFeedAndSeed.com. Just type in coupon code PROP, P-R-O-P, all caps, upon checkout. And if you have any questions, give them a call at 678 678- 653-8838. And I also want to add that Neighbors 2021 seed packs, their organic seed packs, and their cool weather seed packs are all now available online at NeighborsFeedAndSeed.com. And that coupon code PROP will get you 10% off. So be sure and check that out. So they've already changed the way that we think about elections. Well, I dug into it a little bit because You have to remember that when we started this country, they didn't have anything but kind of physical presence. You had to, that's why they had electors. They didn't have like, um, that you could choose electors. Not that they had elector, they had that this idea of having electoral college isn't separate from just logistics. I think it is. But logistically, you had to give time for people to go. Or maybe maybe they sent the electors uh, ahead for this for the purpose of not having it. It's for having being able to do it all at once. But when I went back this morning and I read the Constitution. You read the Constitution seemed, this morning? I did. It's so short. You wouldn't believe it. And it's certainly easy to find the relevant passages, especially my handy little Cato version where it has a lot of footnotes where you can like so uh well i looked through read the relevant passages anyway about electing the president which is all in just one place basically and a couple of amendments so it says that it basically says that the president needs to be elected selected whatever by the time he's supposed to be sworn in which is january 20th and it and it says that the house and the senate you know have a role if it's not clear as you know you've told us about this election scenario so if 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 it's true that it's that elected one like the one that was recently elected they don't take their seats until january 3rd so even if there would be no if it's contested or contingent it wouldn't matter there's nothing you could do about it before January 3rd anyway. So I would, yeah. I don't think it's a bizarre claim that it should be done on election day. I think it should be done on election day. I think there's absolutely no reason whatsoever for it to not be done on election day. None whatsoever. Well, yeah, the and reason will, is that you want to cause a divide and you want to The mo- maximum, them. exactly. That's exactly the reason. And there are a couple of things that are complicating it even further, which is this notion that can you take your vote back yeah so they're saying 
this there are a few things about a couple of things about that that really got me thinking. One is, can you take your vote back? They said that in searches, can I take my vote back? Were correlated with searches for Hunter Biden. Yeah, the who, Google, search, doing Google trend searches, right? Oh, so you're saying it's just as this spiked, that spiked? It I wasn't so. actually tied to because that's just that's just. Uh, yeah, I of think course, they're saying that the correlation, in the... the increase in Hunter Biden searches correlates with the increase in the searches for can I change my vote? Okay, but I also think that searches for the Great Reset would correlate because those are all three of those things have been trending in the past 24 hours. Yes, but I would say that the Hunter Biden stuff started trending over a week ago. Well, the debate night is when it started really trending, probably. So that's had more time. Would, so the can I take my vote back would have had more time. The Great Reset stuff has just become. Yes, yes. OK, yes. OK. But I am saying that anything that's trended over the same time period, that's as far as they drill down into that. Right. Are they actually finding people's computers to see if those people did the same search the, that the people who did the can I take my vote back search are the same people who did the Hunter Biden search? I don't know that they can identify that. I think they're right. just because if they can, that's. I'd like to know a little more about that. Yeah, I think they're speaking about general search trends, a percentage of those terms right, being okay. searched in Google. Because the way they present it, because I, I, question, I question that premise. I sincerely question that premise. Anyone who went early voting for Biden is, I would think, is one of those people who's saying, this is a witch hunt. I don't care. Don't, don't give me facts. Yeah. You know what I mean? That seems a little sketchy to me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe there are olds. I really don't know. But here is something that I think is interesting and bound to be an absolute nightmare. There is no way at this volume of, uh, of non-in-person voting, of mail-in voting or absentee ballots that this, I can't see how this can work, but I believe in seven states, you, they cannot, they need to validate or verify an absentee ballot after the polls closed to make sure that that person did not also go to the polls. So you can take back your vote in some of these states because you send in your ballot, you change your mind, and then you show up on voting day. And then, but in, because those- So you can not, actually do that. You can. That's and probably why this is in the news. It's informing people, it's making people aware that that's actually something that you can do. Maybe, and it's in seven different things, but just thinking logistically about this, if you, I don't know if it's manual or if it's a machine or if it can be trusted or if it's going to make controversy about, there are, gonna, there are going to be absentee ballots and mail-in ballots that get thrown away uncounted on the claim that they also came in person. And furthermore, if you get 65 million people voted already, Already, that's more than half. So they're also going to get the they're, the logistical nightmare of having to wait on all of those absentee and mail-in ballots by first verifying who showed up at the polls. That cannot happen perforce on election day because you don't know who went to the polls on election day until after election day is over. That is a big, big problem. Yeah, that's interesting. That's definitely going to cause some confusion. There's also been talk of should we just go ahead and make it compulsory voting, which kind of the way that— Oh, my gosh, I called that. The social pressure, the way that it works, it almost is compulsory because if you choose not to vote, if you say, I'm not going to vote because I don't like either one, I don't want to choose either one, or I don't know enough information about this particular election to vote— then you're shamed by both. That's where both sides agree. Both sides will shame you if you choose not to pick one but side or the other. That's a self-selected group. That's a group that can be shamed. If you make everybody, I mean, who knows what personality type is the, the staunch, I'm never going to vote. And here's the problem with that is that first, if they really want it to work, they first have to do what California did to disenfranchise me personally. I have been disenfranchised in California. I cannot vote for my candidate because they don't allow right, right in voting. So you must vote for something on the ballot. If they do that first and then force you to vote, I mean, the pencil's going to win. Yeah, that's not a you – know, when you take away the ability to put a right in candidate, that is no longer a choice. You are, no, you are being given two choices, and right. you're saying, 
one or the other. That's it. So you're not really choosing. Yeah, you're a feminist or a misogynist. That's yeah. It's an, it's an <laughs> yes, exactly. It's an act of getting the public to participate so that they invest. Yeah. And this is this is a this is propaganda. Also, yes, voting does work. I think in local areas, it's is a lot. I more actually, impactful. I am going to vote because this local thing, especially this Anthony McLean thing, I I want anybody who had anything to do with p- burying that. I, I just even if it's just asserting my right to vote them down. And I think it's hard. It can be hard in some localities to cheat on the voting. I think that is definitely true. Yeah, that's just where you're going to be able to have the most contact with the candidates and the most true knowledge about them. And where I think they can actually have more of an impact than you can on a national stage. I am considering as a protest vote, just writing in Kanye or Someone oh, sure. else. You can. In Georgia, I always wrote in Ron Paul, and I believe he got more votes than Mickey Mouse. I'm not sure. I'm going to count on Kyle for giving me that information, as he usually does. But I, yeah, I mean, now I'm totally disenfranchised, and it bums me out. Yeah, they say in Atlanta, there's a story in the AJC today that's talking about how you need to get your absentee ballots in. You need to mail them today, or they might not get counted in time. Is George so George is one of the places where they say it has to be in by election day? I guess so. But do it's Joe I mean, Biden's could... here, by the way, today. He's making two stops. He's oh. going to Warm Springs, because I guess he needs to soak his body and his mind. <laughs> and he's also doing one of the drive in rallies in Atlanta. I heard about that out here. Are you ready to try CBD products and see why so many people swear by everything from CBD oil to body lotion to muscle rub? TrueHempscience.com is at the ready with the highest quality products they developed over decades in the business and a lifelong pursuit of nutrition, health, and spiritual well-being. They are eager to introduce you to the CBD experience and so confident in their products, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee and a special offer for Propaganda Report listeners. To learn more about their company, their passion, and their products, go to truehempscience.com slash prop report. These drive-in rallies, Obama had one last week, and Obama was out there speaking at his podium, and you only see him on the screen. So, you know, you just naturally, you... Even though it's COVID, you still kind of assume there's a crowd out there. And there is, but they're all in their cars. And instead of clapping, instead of clapter, you hear honk, 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 really? honk, 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 It's really. That's super annoying. Yeah, really strange. <laughs> so if you want to go honk for Biden, then go up to Atlanta. I think he's going to be there at five o'clock. So is it true that what you predicted basically yesterday is coming true regarding the Hunter Biden thing? I saw an article that was hinting at what I was predicting yesterday. Yesterday, I had speculated that perhaps part of this Hunter Biden thing, the way that it could play out is because there's photographs on hard drives, on his hard drive of his 14, 14 year old niece. At the time, she was 14 years old and she's allegedly topless. And there's been a number of sources that have, unfortunately for them, confirmed this because they're probably going to be on this list of people who, who could be set up. But underage girl nude sexualized on a hard drive is going to cause people who oh my gosh i need to get a screenshot of this stuff before it gets memory hold and people most likely to do that are going to be probably hardcore trump supporters maybe QAnon people and i could see a narrative where in a wicked twist of irony it's we we arrested QAnon people for having child pornography on their computer and they point to this picture of Hunter Biden's niece and they say Hunter Biden's a deep fake and it's not actually the niece. Article today was talking about how Trump supporters are eager to spread child porn online alluding to this very subject. It's funny because I do remember absolutely distinctly you saying that because my first thought was, ha ha, like Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend, I believe, was arrested and raided in his home some years ago for kitty porn. And he got off, so to speak, by claiming it was opposition research that he was trying to ferret it out. Yes. Yeah. There's that, I mean, that I think that sun. would. That's the argument for people who have that picture on their hard drive. But I believe it would be true for the people who have it on their hard drive if they also have a history of Q stuff. Right. I do and they're too. Trying, you know, because the Q is an underground kind of vigilante mentality. Yeah. Right? Trump is yeah. their vigilante. Right. Like, get your mind around that. 
that he's yeah. <laughs> the president of the United States is a vigilante. So the, this, I know I have a deep fake thing and I have a great reset thing. Which can it. I tell you? Let's we'll start with which the deep one? fake. Okay. The deep fake thing is Byron sent me a bunch of excellent emails. He does a little research on the side for me, I guess, <laughs> but he doesn't tweet. So he just like sends it to me yeah. and it's all great stuff. So that I miss it's, he, he wrote that he sent me an article that there was a deep fake scam in, I think, Santa Monica, California, where a widow had signed up for a dating site and it ended up just being virtual dating, probably because of COVID. And she thought she was in a relationship with an, an, a well-known admiral. And I think I think she might have been scammed twice. And, and if I didn't think to try to understand the article to see if the same guy marked her and was a deep fake of another guy. But I think she was, she was scammed twice by deep fakes on her virtual dating, uh, out $300,000. They weren't caught. Her money wasn't given back, but he, the guy she was talking to was the guy you could Google and look at his picture. And my guess is that same guy was doing it to her in more than one direction. So was he just using somebody else's photo? I think he put got somebody somebody what the guy looked like, and he was able to be that person. I don't know how you. Okay, so they were actually talking through video at some point too. I think they were zooming, skyping, or something. Okay, I see that. Skyping. That's a use of it that I have not considered, but that you know, whenever some new technology comes around, there's there's ways that society is going to prioritize how it's used. One is. Sexual, how is it going to be used well, sexually? And, and the first use of deep fake was through pornography, was putting celebrities' faces in pornography. Mm-hmm. And the other, the, one of the, the second ones is going to be scammers. How can we use this to scam people? What about the chick who I believe went to jail for taunting and texting her boyfriend into doing something rash? Yeah, there you go. There's another use of it. That's th- those, those two groups are always. I mean, you could Charles Manson people that way. Yeah. Like if you're Q, Trump told me to do it. You seem like a psychotic, but maybe it's humanity. actually happened. Huh? What What have you done today to earn your place in this crowded world, as John Cusack would say in Utopia? And that's not a spoiler. That's what Dude, they start the whole. That's that's in the previews. It's in the trailers. It's not a spoiler. You're right. There is. Oh, <laughs> thank you for caring. Uh, there is just way too much news. I'll just give you one more thing, and then whatever you got, I got so much I can't even keep. Well, up. the stuff I have yeah. is going to take more than the time we have left, so we might as well go with what. Well, but we, yeah, I, I'll give you just a one second thing, and then you can take the the rest of everything if you want. But I could fill up the whole rest of the time. I'll tell you this though, I saw an article on Lou Rockwell talking all about the Great Reset, and I have to say, like. It was my own fault, but I remember discovering the fourth industrial revolution stuff when I was looking into the World Economic Forum regarding Event 201 before they branded it as the Great Reset. I said it on this show probably in March, like, have you seen this fourth industrial revolution stuff? Like, holy crap. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I know it makes me so mad because if we had been doing Rockfin back then, we would have the we'd have scooped everybody on all this. But on the other hand, it's so my little you know, victory of discovering it without any hope whatsoever of stopping it. Is it, is it, is not my, it, it doesn't really matter, but now it's everywhere is my point. And in this article of Lou Rockwell, it went into the great reset is bad, bad, bad. And then it said, because socialism, so vote Trump. And I was like, Whoa, it's like the mask psyop. Like nobody wants the great reset. Nobody wants to wear a mask. But if you can say Trump supporters like or don't like or whatever, then all of a sudden you get 51% of the people or 49% of the people completely complying without thought whatsoever. That is a lot of people. And then that could be enough for the cultural tipping point, that halo effect or whatever. I do not think you need do you get the 51% of people complying with the Great Reset or complying with... Yeah, I'm saying like with masks and stuff, say say the people who are Nazis about masks hate Trump. Okay, they're Nazis about masks, they hate Trump, and they're really vocal about it. Say okay. that's only like 30% yeah. of the so population. So Trump's against the Great Reset, therefore you should be for it. Is the Just like the masks, where I think that if you just left it to people like looking into it, they wouldn't they 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 wouldn't like it but once they like say what am i supposed to feel about this 
Yeah, well, it, Trump yeah, exactly. likes it. And that's that's Trump how this, like the media control. And when, when you use anger and when you use division and you focus it, you focus the way that people make decisions based on how much they hate the other side, then you can give these prepackaged interpretations of news and just plant them right into their head. Do you love freedom? Does the daily news leave you shaking your head? Does mindless conformity give you the heebie-jeebies? Are you surrounded by people who just don't get it? Are you right now wearing clothes? You over there, yes, you, do you like cool clothes? Well, meet the Rye Guys, makers of fun, freedom-loving t-shirts and more, quality products for independent thinkers and other such troublemakers. We make each of our handcrafted tees with equal parts satire, mischief, and Rye social commentary. Put on one of our tees and you'll meet kindred spirits, share a laugh, and enjoy great conversation. Take off one of our tees and, well, we're not here to judge you. We support liberty, peace, and voluntary solutions to societal ills. And you have our word, our products are never tested on animals other than sacred cows. So, stop by today at www.ryguys.com. That's W-R-Y-G-U-Y-S dot com. Ryguys dot com. The Rye Guys. A rye wit for today's sh- There's a discount code for Propaganda Report listeners. You get 10% off any order with the code PROP10. And they sent me a couple of hilarious bumper stickers that I would like to share with you. One is, says, partisanship, the dubious theory that my party's scoundrels are better than yours. And then this is my personal favorite, but it might might, uh, go over some people's head. Heads. The Federal Reserve blowing bubbles, devaluing the dollar, and indebting the unborn since 1913. I like that, indebting the yeah. unborn. It's simple, That's great. but it says it. Yeah. The Great Reset, or the World Economic Forum, tweeted out one of their old articles from 2017, I believe, but updated a little into video format about eight predictions for 2030. And to what you were saying a moment ago, the first one on the video was, by 2030, you will own nothing and you will love it, slave. It didn't say slave, but that's that's how I heard it. It's- how could it be anything but a slave, unless you're also not working at all? In which case, who is paying for it? Are they slaves? Is it automated? Are we useless eaters? Well, getting to that point, it says all products will have become services. That's That's another one. The, oh wow! Yeah, everything's a start. You will rent everything, so everything we we use, we will be so we'll be indebted to people essentially through rent. That completely folds in with an article I saw today about the housing crisis in New York. It said it's going to further reduce home ownership, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to crash the market, and everybody's going to just gobble it up, like the super super big corporations, and having like no eviction rules where like the little landlord is going to go under and i thought wow this this folds directly in with the hashtag not so great reset that i hashtag own nothing yeah that's a tough one with the eviction stuff because they've set people up in a situation where they can't get work if they didn't have a job at the time or they just got out of college it's really difficult for them to get work i hear you but both people are suffering under borderline bankruptcy and they need to negotiate a new rent in a free market because you either get kicked out and then that guy has nobody renting his place. He's not going to do that. He's going to split the difference with you or you're going to find a way you can clean his house or whatever. But this, then you get to be the jerk. Then even so, you could wreck his house if you wanted to. Have parties, Airbnb it. What, where, no, you know, I understand. How many laws I, are there? Yeah, there's problems on both. The little landlord... Yeah, I have a lot more sympathy for than the big cor- companies and the nationwide kind of Wall Street. And still, I get I get the issues on both sides. I'm just saying that they put both sides in a difficult yeah, situation. Uh, and right, but they I know that are- some of these big companies are threatening people, needlessly threatening people who are are in this situation. So they're it's they're the not smaller- handling it very well either. The targets for all of these COVID rules, in my opinion, are the smaller business owner, the smaller guy who can pull his own weight and doesn't want the welfare state. And then don't forget, like the people who are getting the money is not the guy who owns a four unit apartment. The people who are getting twelve hundred dollars. Is it a week or a month? Are people getting twelve hundred a month? I think they're getting twelve. I don't know what, but they're also getting unemployment. for the unemployment. They're getting both. They're getting unemployment, and then they're just getting like a UBI thing. I think. Some of them are getting the unemployment, but the unemployment is not – it's taking forever to get to people. Yeah, 
And then there's also talk, but whatever. I'm just saying, if they, this mechanism of just randomly abusing small landlords, yeah. you know what I mean? It's totally no, unjust. totally. It's yeah, yeah. You could have a, a rich person in a in an apartment, like a fourth apartment. You know what I mean? Like they just, it's just right. You can't control it like that. And for me, of course, no relief is the better answer because then people would just stop obeying these dumb laws. They're getting paid to their their liberties, their permanent loss of liberties being purchased at the price of a very short term can kicking gain. Yes. Another of the eight predictions is that the U.S. dominance will be over and will the power will be handed to a handful of global powers. Absolutely true. Including no U- the U.S. will be part of that, but Russia, China, Germany, India, and Japan will be chief among them, hmm. showing semi-imperial tendencies. Not England. They didn't mention like the five eyes because no, the English countries, not, I guess. Not in this, not in this the US. version. Must yeah. be a proxy for that. Farewell to the hospital. Hello to the home spittle. So maybe that's part of what's going on. Oh, right the now. tele telemedicine. Yeah, you talked about that. Technology will have further disrupted disease, and the hospitals we know it is on its way out. There'll be fewer accidents thanks to self driving cars. And great <laughs> strides, and preventative, and yeah, and personalized Cause, medicine. Yeah, because self driving cars have shown to be so safe. Well, they certainly, this is the thing. So they're certainly going to, I, when I see restaurants putting their their tables on the street, I realize that they're like starting to do, this is in all the cities they're doing that. So they're starting to kind of make it harder for cars. And then uh, Uber was always going to be driverless anyway. And driverless must be so, so much more sanitary than riding together or getting in a taxi or getting in a regular Uber. So I see a lot of this fostering that whole Green New Deal thing. But I also see, as things have changed out here, I don't know what it's like there, you can't bag your own groceries. So they have, because you're not allowed to go on the other side of the plexiglass. So yeah. that those guys who, I don't know why they get to go on. So I guess it's only people who live together, but they get over there and they do all that stuff. You cannot scale that. The only reason it's working is because most people are too terrified to go out. Yeah. This folds right into the whole Bill Gates agenda of they're going to say, look, we thought population was bad before. We thought climate change meant we needed lower population. We thought your carbon footprint was the problem. But the real problem is we can't, the the infrastructure, the system cannot accommodate 7 billion people anymore because now we have a tenth of the throughput capacity or a half of the throughput capacity we used to have at the retail level or whatever. So that don't don't worry too much if your vaccine causes sterility because there isn't enough room for everybody anyway. It's just yeah. going to reinforce the argument for for extreme measures on population control. Absolutely. There's a couple more that I do want to tell you, but I'm going to have to tell you in the patron 15, but they're very intriguing to me. Well, let's tell people also we have Rockfin videos that have covered some of this stuff. The Great Reset. We did two Rockfin videos on The Great Reset where we play clips coming out of the the evil super villain. I'm talking literal evil super, super villain <laughs> and look and sound when you see this guy out of his and his colleagues' mouths themselves. He's going to be the new George Soros. He was mentioned specifically in that um, Lou Rockwell article. Oh, he's taking the reins, huh? Yeah, we're going to cover these eight things. Like, I own nothing, I have no privacy, and I'm happy. That's going to be on our next Rockfin thing. And I think we might have a surprise for Rockfin subscribers next week. So we'll keep you posted on that. Keep listening for that. It is Share the Show Tuesday. So please share the show. I realize that the one person you think is going to love the show might not be a hit so you gotta ha- probably have to give it to two people in order to uh, get somebody who really appreciates the importance of having propaganda free news yeah share it and if also- you're dating if you're out there playing the field share it with that significant well, other right now just to, to test them to see yeah. if they're going to be compatible <laughs> don't blow it up until it's Whatever. Been worth your while. But if they like it, there could be a major spark there is all I'm saying. That's right. That's right. It's a risky, but it could be big payoff strategy. And there is a fifth Friday DPP this month. A fifth Friday. That's this Friday. We're having a DPP for everyone at the party level patron, which is patron of the truth. 
friends of the show and patron saints that's this friday it's instead of the first friday of november but join now and you'll have a dpp right away all that's right you guys can find slash propaganda report you guys can find your drive time news blast every week <laughs> afternoon at thepropreport.com or your favorite podcasting platform with the Propaganda Report podcast feed. If you want access to the extra content that we post every time we post a DMB, go to patreon.com slash propaganda report and become a patron. We will talk to y'all tomorrow. Have a fantastic rest of your day.